Welcome back guys to another episode of Driven by Christ Auto. So, another day at the shop. We got REM's car done. Uh, we got an actual customer waiting that we're going to give a call this morning. I'm going to review that message because, you know, I've slept since then. But, uh, before we start our day, we're going to go ahead and take a message from our Lord. Our compassionate Lord, your word tells us you have opened doors on our journey through life. This shows us how you are involved in our life journey. You know exactly what is ahead of us and you can alter the hazard parts of our path before we get there. Making our way easier, sometimes you enable us to see what you have done on our behalf at other times you spare us hardships without even showing us your protective work either way your watchful work on our behalf demonstrates your loving involvement in our lives from our limited human perspective your ways are often mysterious you do not protect us from all the bad though neither were you shielded from the hardships during the 30 years of living in this world you willingly suffered unimaginable pain humiliation and agony on the cross for our sake when your father turned away from you you experienced unspeakable suffering because you were willing to endure that excruciation isolation from him we will never have to suffer alone Please help us to remember and rejoice in the glorious truth that you are always with us. You are with us always. And be thankful. In your marvelous name, Jesus. Amen. Alright guys, that is that is so true. If we that that's the biggest thing right there, the biggest step in our life is to accept Jesus is our Lord and Savior once we fully believe in that and we accept that and we choose to love and help others that is all that matters in life because all these materialistic things cars houses you know anything that we could come across is only temporary we're not gonna have that in the end and we're not gonna be able to enjoy them things our whole life eventually we will get old we will get fragile everybody does and eventually we will pass away you know unless jesus comes back first with the things that are going on nowadays i mean revelations there there is a lot of prophet that prophecies that are being fulfilled every day right now i mean i really think in my lifetime or my son's lifetime i mean the rapture's coming and if you believe you checking out before all the bad before it really gets bad it's it's kind of bad right now for a lot of people you know you may be lucky you're in a good area where you're not having to go through all that suffering but there are people that are suffering currently to this day around the world and be thankful you know we're not one of those people and pray for the ones that are suffering but we're going to be up out of here guys soon and i'm so grateful for that but, you know, so give thanks to Jesus. Keep him in our hearts. Keep him in your daily life every day. He, he loves hearing from you. I know we don't hear a physical voice back, but whenever you have that connection, you can see the things working in your life. And it's scary sometimes. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it scares me. Like, I fear it. <laughs> you know, thinking about all the stuff I done messed up on, but you know what? being baptized and believing in Jesus all that stuff is gone including the mistakes you're going to make along the way because you're not you know believing in him you're not going to be like oh that's all right Jesus you got me I'm going to go to the club and go act up tonight no that ain't it you're going to really try not to do something bad but if it happens he's got you there's a reason why this bad thing happened and it's more than likely a learning process but anyways guys let's go in here and see what we got going on this morning we got that supra sitting out front man i'm still ready to build it but we we got to get this customer car ready first it's going to be our our uh our money
monument car out here. People are going to drive by and see a raggedy tore up Toyota Supra. They're going to be like, dang, I don't know if I want to take my car to that shop. But, yeah, Jamie's already in the office getting everything going on. She's got the work order pulled up for this customer vehicle. So, let's go ahead and check the answering machine. So, it says, good morning. I was a victim of a road accident. My beloved uh, Hyundai Timbreon must have been severely damaged. A little buggy drove out of a side street and I didn't even have a chance to react. It all happened so quickly. All I saw was a cloud of smoke following up underneath the hood. When I walked out of the car, the situation turned out to be manageable. The bumper was a bit lifted, and the headlamp was damaged. It's probably smashed into it. It's probably broken. In spite of the strange sound coming from the engine compartment, that doesn't sound good, I figured I'd go back home. Unfortunately, my plan, say the least, didn't work. After driving a hundred miles, I don't know why you would do this, everything shut down. I think the car battery was damaged because the car didn't start at all. Check what happened and what and do what you can to get it up and running. The parts do not have to be new and that's all that matters is that they're good. Good for the wallet. Alright, so uh, you know, I, well, I, what I'm guessing, this guy hit something, the rattling noise or noises coming from the engine bay is probably going to be a belt tore up. Maybe he took out the alternator, you know, smashing it in, pulling a part of that buggy up underneath it. But I'm thinking it's that cooling fan assembly. And the reason why the car maybe is shut off is he probably damaged the radiator. I just hope the smoke wasn't from a blown head gasket. But... Let's go ahead and uh, give this customer a call, and you know he's going to be towing. It. We'll go tow his vehicle in, and I'll meet you all out front. All right, so we got the vehicle here, got it unloaded off of the tow truck, got it put up. So, yep, he definitely done some damage. Uh, the intercooler didn't get destroyed, but the radiator, yep. Radiator got destroyed, and what did I say? The cooling fan was, was dead gum. Did he even? Hold on, let's see. Uh, oh, we lost all the coolant. Uh, not good. Damage the subframe. It looks like it took out the transmission and the drive axle. Let me check on this side that I can see. Okay, so yeah, we damaged transmission. Uh... Well, the belt is on the alternator. Where is the battery located at in this thing? Yeah, battery got smashed all up and destroyed. So, all right, shouldn't be that bad. We, we got some struts we can make up. Uh, it looks like it damaged the rim too. So, all right, let's go ahead and get this thing in the wash bay and get it cleaned up before we get it inside. And we'll go ahead and start breaking this thing down. Alright, fire this puppy up, see how she cleans up. For the most part of it, this thing looks good, man. I mean, he's been taking care of it. That old shopping cart took him out, though. We'll go ahead and give him an interior coverall clean with that black ice air filter. Our air freshener, I should say. Love black ice air fresheners. Windex on the plastic and chrome and coverall on them leather seats and yeah, everything but the steering wheel and that shift knob. You don't want to get it on there. That's a wreck waiting to happen. All right, so we got we got this car pretty detailed. Uh, I ain't gonna even run any diagnostics out here. We're I'll, we're gonna go ahead and get it into the shop and I will see y'all on rack one. All right, so we got it pushed over here on rack one. Um, know that this battery, we're going to go ahead and pull the battery out of here because we know it is absolutely destroyed. The tire is flat. The rim is just gone. We're going to bring this battery. Hopefully, we can bring it back from 4%. I don't know. Now, I didn't get in and do scrap this morning, so we still, we got a ton of scrap we got to break down. I'm probably going to do that this weekend. You know, we'll melt down our scrap and get our scrap money in so we can upgrade some of our cars. And I'll show y'all how to use some scrap pieces on our Driven by Christ drag car. 
Uh, currently, it's running about 206 to 208 miles per hour. We're going to see if we can break the 210 uh, mark. No, always trying to get faster. But anyways, let's get this customer's car going. We're going to have to get this thing all the way up in the air. I'm hoping he didn't damage the... Uh, let's... You know what? Before I do that, let's let's just throw a hot battery into here, and uh, and we will see. Oh, zoom out. There we go. We already know the suspension and the subframe's gone. We're just gonna throw a battery in, and we are going to do some some testing. All right. Let's see. Let's do an OBD2 scan see what the computer picked up during all this catastrophe all right so tune-ups looking good ECU's good all right OBD scan come out good now let's go ahead and take our most feared test this is the compression test I'm hoping he didn't blow a head gasket all right we're in the green he just had the bottom end rebuilt. Everything's still pretty much 100% on it. Okay. So, just looks like the cooling uh, cooling assembly up here just got taken out and the transmission, unfortunately. So, uh, let's do some... Alright, so we know the engine's good. We're not going to have to pull the engine. Let's do some electronic testing. Starter's good, alternator's good. Fuses. Ooh, yeah, I knew the radiator fan housings were gone. Alright. So, yeah, a lot of front end damage. They didn't, they didn't even take out the air filter, so we're good on that. I don't think we're going to have to worry about cooling. Lord have mercy, who is calling me up now? I don't even know what this even is. They're just gonna have to leave me a. They're just gonna have to leave me a voicemail because I don't know what what these people are calling me for. Sorry about that, guys. Man, this phone be ringing all the time in the background. All right, all right. So we're here. Let's go ahead and break down this tire. I'm hoping that I can fix it, but it ain't. It ain't looking too good. I don't know if we're going to be able to bring back a 4% rim or not. Alright, so we're going to drop this lower. Nope, we got to get the car up more. I don't think we're going to have to drain any fluids. I think the coolant's done already fell out of it. I was, I was really surprised he didn't blow the head gasket on this thing. But, alright. Let's uh, drop this lower control arm so we can get our CV joint out. I wish they had tools on here, like where you had to pick certain tools and sizes and sockets. That would be so cool. Alright, now we can take the CV joint out. Because it's obviously destroyed. Sway bar end link is gone. We're going to have to take down the other side to get this sway bar out of here. Go ahead and get over here. Pull this tire off. All right. Yeah, buddy. I've definitely had some experiences with shopping carts. Man, this dude must have hit this shopping cart doing like 80 or something to do this much damage. This thing is destroyed. Well, yeah, we're gonna have to pull this CV joint because we gotta pull the transmission too. Tore up the transmission. Pull this end link out. All right, so that's everything connected on this side. I don't know if the rack and pinion is attached to the subframe in here. I think it is attached to the actual body, so maybe we won't have to pull all that out of here. Let's go ahead and slide the sway bar out. All right, so tie rod in it got whooped up on probably got bent up but at least it didn't tear up his rack and pinion but yeah I've, I've actually it was a real bad storm 
and I was driving through town trying to get back to the house and dude a buggy was getting it across the road and I mean it slammed into the front of my car it tore up my fender it was on my Honda Prelude I had that car had the worst luck but uh tore up my fender broke the headlight uh dented the hood up but that that was really about it that's about all it tore up uh it never did get to my rim or anything but that headlight was oh boy it was gone there was no saving it so we're gonna pull our intermediate shaft off the back and we should be ready to get this transmission out after we get the after we let the car back down and get to the starter should have done that first some some cars see i can reach up there and get the starter but this one must be in a bad position so let's see what we got all right let's get down here there we go yeah we'll go ahead and i guess pull this out while we got it down radiator is history and this coolant reservoir is pretty much destroyed too. So we'll get him a new coolant reservoir. Alright, now we're ready to go back up. Alright. We'll go ahead and get the subframe out of the way. It'll make it a lot easier dropping the transmission. It damaged all the bushings in here. Man, he had to just... This dude was rolling. All right, let's get over here on this bushing. That bushing still kind of looks somewhat good. Uh, 86 on that bushing. Now we're ready to, after we get this down pipe out of the way, now we're clear to drop the subframe. Alright, so yep, this is going to hang up in the air. Now, look at this. we got a straight shot to the transmission. And this is kind of realistic like it is on a real car. If you uh, Sometimes you can remove these transmissions and just leave them resting on the subframe. Say if you got to slap a clutch in or something. Uh, I tried to do that with my Acura TL. It did not work out too well, so I end up... Luckily, I was end up able to get the transmission stabbed back together, and what I did is I cleaned out the the clutch and the surface as good as I could with some brake cleaner. Just cleaned it up and get some of the dust out of there, and that and uh, another thing, I was able to get, slip my hands up in there and get some grease on the throwout bearing. You know that that helped out a lot. So, but I do got to do a clutch on my Acura TL, and it's whew, it's a lot of work involved. All right, so there we go. Okay, good. He did not do any damage to his pilot bearing, throwout bearing, the clutch disc. So all that's good. Uh, wow, he damaged the oil filter. It hit the oil filter too. Let's let's go ahead and do an oil change, cause. If the oil filter got damaged, that means it was not doing its job. We're going to knock this bolt loose right here and go ahead and drain it. Oh, he lost engine oil too. Yeah, he is very lucky the bottom end of this engine is still good. That's probably all the noises he heard was all the tacking and clacking going on from low oil pressure. I hope it didn't damage anything else in this engine. Let's go ahead and grab this oil filter down. Don't have to worry about it leaking everywhere. Don't have any oil in it. Alright. Alright, so we're going to have to break down this tire. I really don't think we're going to be able to fix this rim. I, I'm, I'm really hoping for the best. He's going to need a new tire. I may be able to fix this rim. I'm a pretty good, pretty good welder and fabricator. At least I'll was back in the day let's see what we can do all right we can fix we're gonna fix all of his brake calipers and stuff like that put a new ball joint in drive axle probably need some new grease half shaft new bearing and we cleaned up the starter so yeah uh transmissions history rim is history a whole lot of stuff is just gone so um we're gonna tag that rim it's a rim classic 12 
and let's let's go ahead and pull out our tablet here and we're gonna go to the rim shop central downtown and it is a classic rim 12 I don't even know why I'm doing this it was a 17 inch with no offset tire settings so all right we're gonna need one of them 17 inch all right got that ordered and let's let's see what we got for a tire size uh it is a 215 45 17 okay and they are just a standard tire tire central standard tire 17 inch 215 i think it was a 45 yeah 45 all right got that order put in so that's going to be coming from somewhere else not o'reilly's it's a it's a tire and rim distributor downtown so we got that order in uh we are also going to have to order a we're going to hit up the body workstation shop and we are going to have to get a new front bumper. We know we're going to need a new front bumper and a left headlight. Left headlight. I think that's pretty much. Oh yeah, and a fender. Man, he must have blew the tire out on this one. So front left fender. Alright. So, I know those are going to take a little bit to get here. Those are kind of some bigger parts. So, let me go back here and open up our storage, our part storage room. And we'll access our inventory back here and see what we got to put this car back together with. I should have a lot of these parts all ready to go. Now, this subframe, I may have to hit O'Reilly's up for it. So, let's see what we got. All right. Uh, the transmission, I, luckily, I did have a gearbox, ooh, that's a three-star gearbox, too, I don't know about that, those are kind of, those are kind of hard to come by, yeah, you, you really don't want to get rid of your three-star stuff on customer vehicles, I know we try to take care of our customers, but you want to save that, uh, for your vehicle, so, we are going to need to order a gearbox, so, let's, Go over here and hit up a rallies real quick. Alright. Let's see, shopping list. Gearbox I4. It's going to cost $650 for a new 5 speed gearbox. This is a non LSD, just your one wheel peel gearbox. So go ahead and get that on the way. Uh, I think for the most part of the rest of the stuff, I should have in stock. We'll, we'll find out as we go. Let's go ahead and put his brakes together. Actually, you know what? We're going to go ahead and turn these rotors while we're waiting on those parts. We can do that. I guess that one rotor was so destroyed it couldn't even be turned. So I always keep rotors in stock. So we got some new rotors for it. This little machine's been a, a good help here. Normally it can turn them, any of them out, but I guess that one was so mangled from the carnage of the wreck that you couldn't even turn it. So we're going to go ahead and start putting together this other side. Oh yeah, let's see if we do got this cross member in. Nope, we're going to have to put that in through O'Reilly's too. Get it on the way. Hopefully I can get this all at the same time. Tom, wait a minute. Where is the front cross? Okay, no. This, this thing always messes up. Cross member and order. Alright, so we got that on the way. Should be getting a will call ticket. If they don't have the stuff, they normally call me back and tell me, hey, you're going to have to put that one on rack too. We ain't going to be able to get that in until tomorrow. But this, since this is a super hub, they normally got everything. I love being located next to a O'Reilly's. It's so easy. Alright. Fresh brakes on here. Let's see. Can we put the wheel bearing in? Oh, it's already got the wheel bearing in. Okay. 
Let's see. Let's zoom out a little bit so I can see what's going on here. We should have some sway bars in stock. Yep. We're going to go ahead and throw this new sway bar in. Put a... Put a... Let's see. We're going to put his end link in back in because it's still good. Remember, you guys, he's on a budget. He ain't wanting to buy new parts for everything. So a lot of this stuff I was able to fix. Um, let's see. Got that in. Got that in. All right. All right. Well, Jamie just let me know that they just dropped off our body pieces. They even got here with that. So... What we're going to do is we're going to head out to the paint booth and we're going to see if we can't paint match this. Let me see what color this is real quick. Factory color. What is the current color? You know what? We'll probably just put that on the car and I'll paint it to match it. That way we can we can use our color blend technology that we got with the world's most advanced paint painting booth. My bad, guys. Hiccups is getting me. Uh, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll let it down. We'll go ahead and let's go to our parts room real quick, and we'll pick up those body parts. All right. All right. Yeah, there we are. All right, there we got them. All right. Still waiting on the transmission and stuff. So let's see. Go ahead and throw this light in. Luckily, the, the wiring harness didn't get damaged on that. Had a few broke pigtails, but I had a bunch of scrap, though, you know, scrap pigtails in the back. Alright, new bumper. Uh, license plate. Italy. I'm assuming that that's where this car come from. Let me take this off. It's just a standard license plate, so no, that is not yours. Alright, let's add this to it. We're going to have to actually get him another license plate. Jamie's going to have to go to the DMV for this one. Let me put it in this... Uh, work order for her and it should let her know all right standard why did it tag the italy license plate oh no that one there we go now it should let us do it and there we go all right so jamie's gonna be on the way going to go get our license plate that uh we'll be putting on the rear since they're they're both the same thing you can put either or on the front of the rear but uh in this current state you where this vehicle is coming from it has to have both license plates so uh, let's get our fender on now these fenders already come they, they it's kind of like a black primer on it to to be the best way to explain it kind of it's got a uh oh uh, what is that stuff called i just watched a, a paint thing because i was thinking about painting my civic um it's not a primer it's called something else anyways it's basically already pre-primed it's ready to get with get some paint and a clear coat on it so let's go ahead and get this thing back up in the air because I think I heard O'Reilly's just drop through my back bay door over here, so we should have our transmission on the shelf. It's already paid for. And, yep, there they are. Transmission and subframe ready. To, oh, and we got our tire and wheel in. So, let's go ahead and get that tire and wheel mounted. So, we got to balance it, and then we'll do the hard stuff. Alright, install. 215, 45, 17. Yeah, that's a nice wheel. It's not broken. And tire shredded off of it. It's always good. Alright, let's see what we got. Well, these tires come in and need three things of weight. These things are unbalanced like crazy. I try to put that on a car, it shake the whole front end loose. Alright, so since this is a one wheel peel. 
we are actually going to put the good tire on the right front but uh let's go ahead and get our subframe nope nope not our subframe we're gonna go ahead and throw our transmission on now you would normally have a jack that would lift this up i mean some people are strong enough you know i'm strong enough i can pick up a transmission and stab it on my own but safety first guys it slips out of your hand it cracks you in your skull it's never a good outcome so just use the transmission jack it's a it may take longer but it's less chance of getting hurt all right Pull that down. Now you would have some shift cables or shifting lever levers. I think on the Tibrion they actually had shift cables, and then you would have your uh, uh, mat, uh, slave cylinder out here on the side that would operate your uh, your uh, clutch fork, and you would have your clutch master cylinder. So, anyways got all those aspects on a real car now we're gonna put our intermediate shaft in all right I was able to replace the bearings on it so it's pretty much like brand new now and we will go ahead and throw the subframe up here remember use use the jack for it too it ain't no use to getting hurt or starting in bolts the wrong way because you're trying to balance a, a heavy you know a heavy piece of metal that you're trying to push bolts through and hold it just it just don't work out very well <laughs> there we go brand new bushings we're gonna go ahead and put new bushings in here I ain't worried about the mold bushings the bushings are not that expensive you know we're not gonna charge them for it we're just gonna take care of them throw them in there all right got that ready to go and we can go ahead and throw our down pipe from our turbo in. Okay. Uh, go ahead, move over here and get our CV axle put in. And our lower control arm. Now this one, yeah, that's right. We did rebuild the control arms, which they are going to come with new bushings. We do not ever use old bushings. And we got, uh, did I put the sway bar in link in? Yeah, we got that. So now let's put our brand new tire and rim on the front right. Because that's going to be the one that it pulls with. Alright, got that on there. Let's see. Oh yeah, we got to build a strut real quick. And that was a shock absorber A. New spring, new cap. That off. Alright. Go ahead and pick our knuckle up and hang it off of this. There we go. And yeah, I guess we can put our dust shield on now. Put our bearing in our hub assembly and then we got a bearing tool that will press this in nice and even and now we can put our CV joint in and I wasn't able to repair that alright so looks like we're fixing to have to hit up O'Reilly's because I could have swore that we had some CV joints in stock I guess I need to put in another order for them all right, so front CV joint shaft C. We're gonna go ahead and we'll grab about six of the, yeah, six of them. All right, we gotta wait on that to come in. So uh, while we're waiting on that, I guess we can go ahead and put the rest of the stuff in. We'll build the brakes and drop our radiator in. Get some coolant going in here. Ooh, I'm getting low on brake pads too. Alright. We ain't ready for that lower control arm yet. It's a lot easier putting CV joints in whenever you can move this whole assembly around and then we'll put the tie rod, inner tie rod and outer tie rod in once some those CV joints get over here. Alright. 
There we go. And got a starter to put in. We was able to remand his starter, fix everything on it, so it's like brand new. And we got a new coolant reservoir in stock. A lot of cars use these reservoirs. Let's go ahead and throw in a new radiator. We had that in stock already. Cooling fan housing and a cooling fan motor. So luckily we had that in stock. See, it's good to have these parts double order in parts. That is if you got the money to do it. If you work on a lot of the same cars, like if you're going to specialize in imports or muscle cars, start stocking up common parts on those. That way you ain't got to be blowing down on rallies every time you turn around. But, alright, we got that in. We're going to go ahead and add coolant to the system it should be ready to go I don't think we should have any leaks we got our coolant hoses hooked up so let's go ahead and do it since this is probably gonna have a pretty big air pocket in the system we're gonna fill it up there to that sensor level once we crank up the motor it's going to pull this level down and get the air pockets out of the system so uh, you just don't want to fill it up over to this overflow weep hole because then you're going to have a mess everywhere Ooh, I guess he needed some brake fluid too I guess whenever he damaged the front uh, brake caliper he lost a lot of brake fluid so we're going to have to bleed these brakes so fill it up over the max and oh whoa not that much Ooh, I'm glad we didn't have a mess there I caught it before it got too bad but yeah fill it all the way up to the top whenever we bleed the brakes it will bring that fluid level back down and we gotta <coughs> we gotta put some engine oil in oh I gotta get some water real quick know that All right, and we use that. Uh, we're gonna run some Castrol 5W20 into here with our lovely Hyperlube additive. The following parts are missing from this car. Oh yeah, I guess we do need an oil filter. That would have been a mess. Uh. <laughs> I know we keep these in stock because we're constantly working on four cylinders. Alright, new oil filter. And I just heard the back door shut. So I dropped off our axles. We'll be able to grab them here in just a second after we get some oil in here. Alright, remember, hold it wide open whenever this thing tips over. Count to five. One, two, three three four five and that should be pretty close to to being full yep right on it that number five trick always works uh, I guess we'll top this off I mean it's not completely full but go ahead and top it off there we go Looks like the power steering fluid is really full. I don't think it needs any more. Uh, let's see. Let me think. Oh yeah, we gotta get this thing up in the air for the CV axle. Alright. Alright guys, give me just a second. Got a phone call coming in and I will be right back. I hate having to stop in the middle of these videos. I know it's a pain, but give me just a second and I will be right back.
Alright. Alright, I'm back, guys. Oh! I was O'Reilly's. Let me know. Hey, uh, Jamie hasn't went up there and paid our our bill for this week yet, which I thought it was automatically, you know, transferred out of my account. Even though, yes, it does deduct it from my top screen credits, but we still have to pay a bill at the end of the week, so I'm going to have to go in there and go tell Jamie to do that. I'll just send her a quick text message, but let's go over here and get our axles real quick. Yeah, there they are, right there. Alright. You just need one of them. We're going to leave the rest of them over there. Alright, let's do it. There we go. Fresh axle. We'll put our lower control arm in. There we go. And the inner tie rod. There we go. Now we are going to have to realign this car since we did mess with the tie rod ends and our lower control arm. It is going to have to be realigned. And plus, and plus we want to make sure that the brakes are going to be working correctly. We done gravity bled them so uh, we'll close off the bleeder valves and we're going to get ready to drop this thing back down. Alright, we'll just connect our battery post up and we should just be able to uh, just drive it on over there. But you know, until we know for sure, um just we'll just get we'll just pull it over there like we normally do. I'll see y'all over there in the test uh, test path guys. All right, so we got it in here. Uh, let's go ahead. We will do our, that's kind of far away to do an alignment. Let's go ahead and do our test path first. Yes. All right, so we cranked up good. Let's check it. Brakes are at 100%. Pretty close to 90. Oh yeah, really good suspension. Really good, really good. Alright, everything is green. There's not even no yellow. This thing's almost like a brand new car. Somebody's taking really good care of this. I bet you whoever was driving this almost seemed like uh, maybe whoever owned this car. I don't know. Heck, it could have happened to anybody. Let's go ahead and do the wheel alignment. Lord have mercy. Well, this wheel alignment the way out. I knew the front was going to be bad because we just redone all that. But the bat boy, it had to have been chewing some tires up. I don't know how it didn't do it unless they ran over everything he hit it with the front he may have hit it with the back too <laughs> all right there we go we got all that aligned we are gonna have to realign the headlights since we did put a new one in make sure we're not blinding people there we go uh, oh my lord even the right ones messed all up all right that looks pretty good there we go. Alright, so now we got to get it into the paint booth and we are going to repaint uh, this front bumper and this left fender. Oh, well, you know what? To make sure this thing matches, since we got the most technological advanced, uh, you know, and I'll show you something. Whenever you're doing an alignment, you can go up underneath here and as that machine, what this thing does is it raises up and it holds the car and you got, there's adjustments on the end of this inner tie rod where you can pivot this in and out 
and then there's also adjustments right here where you can pull the bottom of the tire like away from here or back you know this this way uh, which is going to be your camber uh, and then your toe is how much the tire is turned in and out so you kind of want them a little bit in like 12 degrees in that way it helps hold the car straight but you know we're just going to zero it out because that's less wear on the tires but yeah and then you do the same thing you roll this little thing it's on a track it rolls back here and you lift it up from here and you can make adjustments on this trailing arm right here and right there so kind of wanted to show you all that but that's how they really do an alignment so it doesn't, I wish they would utilize the stuff that they put in this game. I mean, they went through all this detail. You figured you'd be able to use some of that stuff up underneath here. But, hey, I'm just throwing out suggestions for the next car mechanic simulator. So, hopefully they, they can take some of the advice. Because I know being a real auto mechanic, I've worked for Honda and Acura and a few mom and pop shops. You know, private owners and... I would love to see a game that utilized a lot of that stuff. I mean, it can be basic. It ain't got to be down to the T, but, you know, let's get it. Let's still have this version for your beginners, but they need to have, like, a, a beginner, a intermediate, and then ASC certified expert, like, <laughs> where you got to know tolerances and everything. That would be so sweet. I would have fun, so much fun with that. All right, guys, I'll see y'all over there in the paint booth because this customer's waiting. Now, I thought about it. We could pull these body pieces off and paint, you know, paint the individual pieces, but then you're going to have to worry about is the paint going to match? Is it going to look right? So, the best, since we got the most advanced paint booth in the world, or we can just paint this whole car at one time, not have to worry about it getting on everything, and it does it pretty quick. I think what we're going to do is we're going to give him a fresh paint job. But let's look at the work order. Let's make sure we don't have another incident of wasting money like we've had before. So let's see. Uh, spray in the factory car. Okay, spray car with factory paint. He doesn't say spray the part, so he does want the car repainted. So let's see. We're going to hit this. We're going to go to paint car. And we are going to go to... Oh, he likes that metallic silver. That is nice. He just said he wants this thing back to the way it was. That's a nice car. Alright, factory car. And hit it. Alright, so while this paint is, we're going to go ahead and put a vacuum on this room and get it ready so the paint will cure. We use some of this this top secret paint stuff that I can't tell what it is. <laughs> I'm pretty sure painters are laughing right now. But anyways, alright, we're going to turn on our machine. It's going ahead, you know, it's working. We're going to get out of here. And, okay, there ain't nothing i got to worry about. That's going to take us a few minutes to do, and while that's going on, boy, I am telling you, Jamie, in this car, why does she keep doing this? Like, now i got to move two vehicles. All right, let me get this thing moved into the dyno bay. I don't know why Jamie keeps doing this. We got to... Where does this car come from? Where are these cars coming from? They're just like popping up everywhere. Like that's our Eclipse car. We'll, we'll put it outside bay door or shop door too. Oh yeah, you got the, you got the Supra, got the Eclipse out here. This car is actually for sale, so we're not going to keep it. It is a special edition. Uh, it's got quite a bit of horsepower. Um, from factory, it was pushing out 363. I think we end up squeezing like close to 700 wheel horsepower on it. It's this thing will destroy cars in the eighth of a mile. So this is a good eighth of a mile racer. So we're gonna get it out here. Ooh, it's kind of dirty. Let's let's go ahead and get it moved to the wash bay. 
Alright, we got it over here. We're gonna go ahead and wash this thing off and get it ready for sale. Oh yeah, that hood is nice now. It was, this car was kind of dirty. It had been sitting up for a little while. Can't be selling their dirty car. Yeah, this is our Paul Walker car. Built in memory of Paul Walker's Eclipse off of the first Fast and the Furious. You know, I don't know how to put, I know people got mods where they can put the, the actual vinyls and stuff on it, but I just did it the best I could with what I got, so. If, any, if anybody saw that going down the road, they knew exactly what it was trying to imitate. So, we're going to get it out here in front of Garage 2, and we're going to throw that for sale sign into it. Alright, so Jamie's getting a for sale sign and vehicle information. We're going to put it out here, and we're going to put it up there on our, our marquee that, you know, we got some vehicles for sale. The... The Mitsubishi Eclipse. We're going to be building this one for. We're actually building this for a an attorney. Uh, you know, she she got she's got some money. She said she wanted a good she wanted a good sport SUV, but she wanted it to be a uh, luxury with a sport attitude. And she she actually does want to beef this motor up. So uh, she doesn't want it to be factory. She wants it to have a good sound, but not too loud. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we, we kind of got, kind of got our, and she wants all this replaced with leather, black leather. So, and she wants the vehicle like a, like a, like a pearl black, uh, like a darkish gray kind of black color. She said she wants it to be a, a dark color or a dark wine color. So she's, she's got many colors that she sent over that she does like but we got to make sure everything matches so i got some information on that so we are done now the the tibrion should be ready and yes the machine is not running so we are ready for this one Ooh, look at that paint boy look at that paint there that stuff shiny all right so it looks good on the inside, and I think we are ready to call up a customer so they can come and pick up our vehicle, or their vehicle, not our vehicle. This is not ours. Oh, we got one more thing we got to put on there. We got to put this license plate on that Jamie went and got that was sitting out here. All right. Uh, more power. That's funny. That one's up front. Yeah, that one needed to be up front with the engine. All right. Alright guys, so we're going to call up our customer and we will meet them out front and get the vehicle out front and see what our work order consisted of. Alright guys, I'll see y'all there. Alright, so we got the customer. Customer's inside, you know, speaking with Jamie. She show him doing the work order details. Man, we got like a... Got like a used car lot going on out here. We got vehicles everywhere. But this thing, man, this thing looks good now. I mean, engine's in really good condition. This is a nice car, man. I mean, I, I'd actually kind of like to drive a turbocharged Hyundai Tiburon. I bet you that thing would fly. But either way, customer's happy. This is exactly what they requested for. I mean, as soon as he saw it, he's like... He fell in love, it's like, and, it, and it's hard to fall in love with a car all over again, especially after you done driven it for a while. But getting a remake over like this, this is like a this is like a new car. So let's go ahead and make sure we got everything on our customer order list done, and it looks like everything is in the green. So let's see what we made. All right, we made a total of seven thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, story order has got an X on it. I don't know why the X is on it. I'm not really sure what happened there. Standard tire. I did put a standard tire on there. I mean, it wasn't a sport tire. Standard tire. Standard tire. Okay, what what's going on? He's saying there's something up with the tire. 
I mean, is it the right wheel side? Let me go ahead and get this thing back in on the rack. Man, it's always something. Alright. Alright, so apparently something's up with the tires. Apparently it's not the right tread design or something. Something's wrong with the tire. Alright, so we know. Let me just pull it off. Let's see what's going on. This, this, it shouldn't take that long. I don't I don't know why it's doing this. Okay, let's look at this stuff. 215.45. Standard. Yep. Everything is good. Uh, unless he wanted both front tires repaired. Let's try to hurry up and get another tire. Only got five more minutes on my camera. We're just going to have to cut this. But let's see. Standard tire. Okay. We know it was a 17. No, it was a 215. That was a 45. Okay. We got it. All right, let's go ahead and separate the 90%. Well, I don't know why you would want to do that. Though. Oh, yeah, it would help if I put the tires together. <laughs> no, stop. Come on, man. Install. I mean, they're both standard tires. I don't get it. Watch me put the one that didn't have a hundred percent. Lord have mercy. I accidentally grabbed the wrong tires, guys. They look on I me, mean, it's almost brand new. I don't know why he's I don't know why he's wanting to do it. Alright. Let's do this a little bit slower. A hundred percent. Alright, there we go. I'm hoping this does it, man. We are racing against the clock, guys. We are about to close for today. I know how Jamie is, boy. If it gets past time to go home, see this thing saying 90 something percent. I, I don't know. You know what? There, let's let's get this thing off here. Come on, let's get it on here. Okay, it's still saying something. Come on. Alright, is this, is this tire just not balanced or something? I remember balancing it right. Yeah, that's right. Alright. Let's get this thing outside. I'll catch y'all out, out front. Alright. So, let's check this work order. Alright, there we go. We got it that time. Alright, there we go. $11,264. So, doing these jobs, I mean, even if you miss one little thing, it can make a huge difference. I mean, just for that one tire, that was like $3,000. I mean, that's kind of crazy, but, but anyways, guys, we're going to go ahead and get him on the way and get our money. Thank the Lord we are blessed with that job and we was able to get it done right. So I ain't got very much longer this camera battery left. So we're going to wrap it up for today and I got to get all these vehicles parked inside and make sure Jamie's got our printout of all of our parts and stuff that we bought today. And I'll probably, since today is Friday, I'm going to probably come up here tomorrow, probably do some scrapping, just take care of some stuff around the shop. But other than that, guys, I will catch y'all in the next episode of Driven by Christ Auto. Later.